Hello and welcome to my shop. The video you're about to watch is the method that I use to prepare wood pin blanks for turning. Now, this is not the only way to do things, and this certainly is not the best way to do things. This is just the way that I like to prep blanks in my shop. My hope is that some of the things I do may be beneficial to you and help you get started preparing your blanks for turning. When preparing a blank to turn into a pin, many kits will contain more than one tube. What I like to do is compare the lengths of those tubes, and if they are the same length, then we only really need to use one for this exercise. We'll start by laying our tube on the blank, hold it tightly, and draw a hash mark at the end of the tube. We then move the tube down the blank, align it with the hash mark, and draw our second mark. Now we know that we have our two blanks laid out. I like to put a, a line across the center, and the reason I do that is because when I cut this and I put it on the lathe to turn it, I want to make sure these two sections are aligned so that the pin goes back together and the grain flows from top to bottom of your pin. When drilling a blank that has multiple sections, you might remember that we drew our line where to cut for the proper length of the tube, and we drew a little hash mark here so that we would know how to realign those blanks when we turn the pin. We always want to drill from that hash mark out. So I've got this one lined up and ready to go. I'll end up turning this one over and drilling from the hash mark out. The nice thing about that is we guarantee that where our pin meets at this at the trim rings in the middle, that it will always the grain will always flow. If we get off a little bit as we drill and maybe drill at a bit of an angle, it's not going to be a huge deal in the finished pin. It won't be noticeable at all. While drilling your blank, be sure to stop frequently and clear the flutes in the bit. We don't want any material building up in there and causing excess friction, which will then build up heat and could cause your blank to crack or split. Once again, there's our hash mark, so that becomes the top of the pin where we'll begin drilling. And our pin is ready to go. Many pin kits will come with tubes that are pre-scuffed, but if your tubes are not scuffed, if they're nice and shiny, the first thing you need to do before gluing them into your blank is to scratch them up on a piece of sandpaper. I like to go to my table saw, which has a nice hard surface. Any solid flat surface will do. I lay down a piece of sandpaper, and then I'll hold the blanks between my middle finger and my thumb and roll them with my index finger while swirling them on the sandpaper. This produces a nice scuffed effect. This will give the glue a really nice surface to adhere to. There are many different glues that can be used for gluing the tubes into your blanks. I prefer to use a medium CA glue. Before you glue a tube into any blank, the first thing you wanna do is dry fit it. I have had occasion where there will be an obstruction inside of the blank 
and the tube will not go all the way into the blank. In that case, you'll need to take it back to the drill press and ream the hole out to make sure the tube fits nicely. Once you know that your tubes will fit inside of your blanks, you want to douse the tubes with medium CA glue. Don't be shy. Insert the tube, move it in and out a couple of times to spread the glue, and you can use a screwdriver, a nail, or a pin insertion tool to align the blank flush, or align the tube flush with the end of the blank. Now, when there's a lot of glue on the table like this, I've been known to recycle the glue by rolling the tube in it and then sliding it right into the blank. Now, you want to be rather quick with this process. And the reason why is if the blank has any dampness at all, I've seen those tubes grab and not be able to fully insert them. One last thing I want to point out, you'll notice my hash mark here and my hash mark here. Both of my tubes were laying facing the same direction, and that is the direction from which I plan to insert the tube. You always want to insert the tube from the center of the blank out to make sure you're going to remove the least amount of material from the center so you get the best alignment of your grain. The next step in the process is to trim each end of both blanks down to the level of the tube, being very careful to keep the face of the blank perpendicular to the tube. Once you've trimmed your blanks on both ends, they're ready to go to the lathe. 